Charney, the poster child for outrageous workplace behavior. Fall of the sleaze king. Are you the sleaze king? Behind that racy ad campaign. Do you think you've pushed the envelope too far? And the butt of jokes on SNL. You know what? Sue me! From his bedroom turned war room. This is something we don't want to look at. Can he pull off the biggest comeback ever? I'm not crazy. I'm not. <laughs> Plus, showdown at the fast food window. This is a horrible corporation with horrible values. The video he posted that took him from pulling in 200 thou a year to fired and food stamps. You would filmed yourself and then you posted it. And going out with a bang. As for this job, well, I quit. What? You said the F word. Posting your resignation for the whole world to see. I can't do this anymore. Tonight, Occupational Hazards. Here's David Muir. Good evening. Elizabeth is off tonight, and we start right off with that exclusive interview. The man once behind American Apparel, known for its racy ads, provocative clothing, and its models. Some say those ads crossed the line, and that the CEO did too. At work, in his underwear, even after he was gone, a video that suddenly went viral, where he's not wearing any apparel, American or otherwise. Tonight, he's fighting back right here, and whose side will you be on? Gio Benitez with the interview. It's a sunny day in California, and I journey to this castle to meet a banished prince. Good to see you. Good to see you. His name is Dove Charney, one of the most controversial and outrageous executives in corporate America. Is this where you get your inspiration from? Like this view here? I mean, anybody. Actually, make that X executive. See, Dove, the very bad boy of boxer briefs and deep VTs, was unceremoniously ousted last year from the garment giant American Apparel. Dove Charney ousted by the company's board yesterday after being terminated by a unanimous board decision. The company's board has fired him. And now, for the first time, he's ready to talk about it. There's everything, no holds barred here. This 10 bedroom bachelor pad doesn't look like the home of a pauper. But the exiled exec says he's flat broke. This doesn't exactly look like the kind of place where someone who's hurting would live, huh? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he could hurt anywhere. <laughs> Charney, the Canadian who loves all things American, brought us here in an effort to overcome allegations of sexual misconduct and mismanagement. Fall of the sleaze king. Are you the sleaze king? I'm not the sleaze king. I want everybody to know I'm not the sleaze king. I have nothing to do. The sleaze king is another guy. Covers like this one aren't winning you any brownie points, are they? Well, you know, I'm not a Girl Scout. Someone we talked to said Dove Charney is very likable. He's just not a normal human being. Fair? Um, was that my mother? <laughs> <laughs> that was my first taste of this man's oddball affect. And I'm not the only one who's experienced the full Charney. Yeah! <laughs> I'm not happy with something, so, you see, I'm not happy with a V. I know we can do better there. Since Charney founded the company, American Apparel distinguished itself as a company that, against every trend, manufactured clothing in the U.S., paying its workers far above the industry average. A good worker could make 13, 14 bucks an hour, and their colleagues are working in sweatshops where they're paying cash for five. Come on up, Dove. We saw the Dove love ourselves at this rally of current and former employees who believe he can save their troubled company. He's a great man, a great boss. Someone here said he needs us as much as we need him. Well, because they know who I am, and I know who they are. Pronto posible. That he can return to that company. Now look at all these people. They were praying for you. Praying. So passion takes many forms. <laughs> I'm touched. I'm touched. Amen. But Charney is not universally adored. He's equally famous for building the brand by pushing the limits of good taste and sexual propriety when it came to marketing its clothing. So early on, you were criticized for using very young models uh, for those ads. Okay. So we have some of the pictures here. Uh, these that really, some say, border on kitty porn. Okay, but you're saying kitty porn and you're saying young models, but our models have generally been older. You know, are, are the age... But well, made to look younger. But like I don't know, that's made, made to look younger is very subjective. Looking back, though, do you think you pushed the envelope too far? I'm sure we pushed the envelope too far a couple times. 
That's why you make the next ad right away. By 2005, the company was growing by leaps and bounds, earning $211 million in profits. And by early 2007, they went public. For Charney, it was always about breaking boundaries. And that was the driving force behind both his rise and fall. See, as the profits were piling up, so were allegations, lots of them, that his sexual enthusiasm wasn't just a marketing ploy, but that it created a sexually charged hostile work environment. There's a sexual element of fashion that, 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 that's inescapable. So like to then start saying, ah, let's get scared about sex. Uh, you know, let, we can't mention the word sex in the workplace. I mean, it just doesn't add up. It's, it's not right. What do you think your weakness is? Is it women, sex, passion? What's your weakness? My weakness is probably not knowing what my weaknesses are at all times. Maybe. Did you ever sexually harass any employee? No. I've never engaged in, in, in any activities that could be characterized as sexual harassment. And yet, despite his denials, the headlines and court filings started raining down. They weren't all about sex, but many were. 2005, Charney is accused of ordering the hiring of women in whom he had a sexual interest, conducting job interviews in his underwear, and giving one of the plaintiffs a vibrator. 2008, a former employee claimed Charney ordered her to pretend to masturbate. And in 2011, another former employee accused Charney of violently kissing her. Charney has been facing lawsuits and accusations of sexual harassment for years. Do you know how many times you've been sued for sexual harassment? Um, maybe a dozen, maybe less. He became so notorious, even SNL spoofed him. You know, and if my employees don't like it, you know what? Sue me! The publicity you got, most notably for that lawsuit in 2011, uh, in that case, an employee accused you of holding her prisoner in your apartment in Manhattan and forcing her to have sex with you. She sued for about $260 million. What happened in that case? What happened in that case? Okay, I, I, it's confidential. She lost on her sexual harassment lawsuit. Charney admits to sleeping with employees, but says everything was consensual. All those accusations are crap. There's allegations, whatever, and we've resolved them. None of, it, none of these allegations were ever proven. Charney says some were settled, some dismissed. In any case, they were handled well enough for the company's board to let Dove keep being Dove for years. But then the bottom line started to bottom out. Experience of two, three years. Yeah, we lost a couple hundred million dollars. And I never thought it would be such a difficult job. Then losses piled up, and by 2013, they were hemorrhaging money. Finally, the combination of red ink and blue headlines came to a head at a fateful board meeting last year in New York when Dove's head was served on a platter and six months later and I finally was out at Christmas 2014. Among the charges in your termination letter you are accused of misusing company money, violating the company's sexual harassment policy, going so far as to offer significant severance packages to numerous former employees to ensure that your misconduct vis-a-vis -vis these employees would not subject you to personal liability. Well, I think those accusations are completely false. It was an ignominious ouster for the brash entrepreneur, and the press had a field day. Dove Charney fired by the company's board of directors yesterday. Have you ever just started crying over what's happening? Yes. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I've been working 365 for 10 years, solid, okay, built a massive brand that captured the imagination of the world. And then to treat me like that, to throw me on the street, shame on them. Shame on them. That's my message to them. But like all great American success stories, he's determined to write a second act. We're gonna get it back. We're gonna get it back. I gotta be there. When we come back, Charney takes us deeper into his home, his bedroom, his master bath, where his secret plans are plastered on the walls. How is he plotting to return to power? It does make sense. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not. But would anybody take a chance on a guy doing this on camera? Stay with us. 2020 continues with occupational hazards. Once again, Gio Benitez. How are you, man? A few days after our first interview, Dove invited us back to his fortress of solitude. You want to get started now? To show us the most fascinating and private place, his master bedroom. This is a first time exclusive ABC News. I don't want to explain what this is. This is something we don't want to look at.
He now calls this his war room. The walls covered in a collage of post-it notes, articles, and random figures. Here's why sales, it was 634 last year, 658 this year. There are rows of business cards pinned to the door. These are just contacts. Even the bathroom mirror hasn't been spared. This is my recent pile of crap. It's just enough to make you wonder. It does make sense. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not. <laughs> The magic and the madness, which was once the heartbeat of American Apparel's factory floor, is now being channeled here in Dove's determined, perhaps desperate attempt to take back his beloved company. So this is what I do. This is my life. I've had a minute being on the outside to re-strategize how I want to take control of the company again. And I intend to. He's cagey about how he plans to finance a takeover, but open about his public relations strategy. Remember those adoring workers who are rallying for his return? The organizers of this demonstration directed me to this Dove devotee. A 10-year veteran seamstress named Anna Amador. She calls it an injustice that Dove was taken out of this company. Why the love for the so-called sleaze king? Anna says after Charney got the boot, her hours were cut back. Oh, so there's people that are just at home yeah. for weeks and weeks, furloughed. I'm concerned that there'll be human tragedy if this business falls apart. That was Dove the compassionate. I also met Dove the persecuted. Charney has long alleged that the company conspired to destroy him, citing, among other things, the suspicious leak of this notorious video shot in an apartment rented by the company in which the inimitable CEO dances in front of a co-worker and a friend wearing nothing but his custom-tailored birthday suit. Charney says it hit the web just one day after Dove was ousted, and he's convinced the leak must have come from the company because it was contained in an email to which they had access. Hours after I'm fired, a personal video shot by a friend who had not distributed to anyone was released in the public. It has to be connected to the company's activities. Okay, so the company went as far as to release a video of me. That was personal. Okay. And how did they and get that video? Because they had access to all of my personal affairs. That video went viral because people are probably asking, who does this? I have my own lifestyle. You know, we're taught in school, don't judge people's personal lifestyle, okay? Now it was high time to pay a visit to the company and meet the woman who took Dove's place. Bottom line, was there an underhanded plot to get Charney out of here? No, I don't believe that at all. Maybe 400 styles and... Paula Schneider, newly appointed CEO, is the new face of American Apparel. Her mission, to restore the company to profitability, to save the workers' jobs, and to distance it as far as possible from its controversial founder. You know, I have great respect for what he built here, but there were challenges. In the last five years, the, the company has lost over 300 plus million. So, you know, it wasn't a financially healthy company, and my goal is to take it, turn it around. What exactly was Dove fired for? Dove was fired for violating our sexual harassment and our anti-discrimination policy. He was also fired for misuse of corporate assets. He says all of the claims of sexual harassment are baseless. That's not what came out in the findings. But if these cases uh, were true, if what these women said happened, mm -hmm. this went on for years. Years. How could that have been allowed? Hard to understand. Schneider says that getting the company back on track means that, yes, workers like Anna are now being furloughed. In some cases, they are being furloughed for weeks. And, and I feel tremendously bad about that. And the company is quick to point out that plenty of workers were elated by the news that Charney had left the building. When you work at American April closely with Dove, you're pretty much scared all the time. The company directed us to this employee who did not want to show her face. He will yell at you, call your names, humiliate you until you feel down, broken. Was that a common sentiment here? I've the heard company? that and I've seen reports, I've seen HR reports to that effect. So after hearing that, we dropped in on Dove one last time. The company is saying that you were hemorrhaging money, that you were just piling up debt, that you just left a big mess there. Even the best of American companies had periods of losses. What's important here is about the go forward opportunity at American Apparel, and I believe I had a good strategy to go forward. As for this employee's allegations? I think that's one person's point of view.
okay? There's many different points of view. And I'm not gonna get along with everybody. This is a tough environment. It's the apparel industry. Not everybody has to work at American Apparel. One page but Charney stop. doesn't deny he can be a tough boss. Hello? We're taking over t-shirts, man. What do we need? What do we need? What do we need to do private label for? In so fact, back in his war room, this guy's next Charney showed us something revealing. You are a worthless pansy ass who is now weeping and slobbering all over my drum set. Like the trailer to the movie Whiplash, the story of a maniacal music director who has unreasonable expectations of his students. The allegedly abusive boss knows the words by heart. Harmful and good job. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I'll push my white collar workers harder. I was combative, I was a pushy boss, I was a hammer on my white collar staff, that's for sure. But when we asked again about those lawsuits, Dove had had enough. The new management at American Apparel says there were 15 lawsuits with $6.1 million in payouts. Look, I mean that statement is misleading. Okay, the statement that I've been told what they've told you. They're trying to mischaracterize. You know, I won't discuss the lawsuits. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to me. It's been a bitch hunt. They spent $10 million chasing me around. Okay? You're talking about my sexuality, okay? I don't like it. You always go through periods of redemption. So what's the future look like for the fallen fashion icon? Well, the company is positive that the odds of a Charney restoration are slim. Actually, make that zero. He is not allowed to be an employee or an officer or CEO of the company, period. There's no option there. And just this week, news broke that the SEC is investigating what led to his termination. How do you respond to that? I think for something like that, it's going to go straight to my lawyers. There's nothing I can say about that in this forum. At this point now, why would American Apparel, or perhaps any company, hire you back? Because uh, I'm a garment man, I know my business, I'm passionate, I, my ethics are good, I'm a great industrialist, and I'm a human being. I have faults, I've made mistakes, but uh, I love what I do. Before we said adios, I had one last question. It was about his bedroom walls. If you can add one more note today, right here, what would you write? Uh, let me try it. This might not be it. Let me, let me take a stab at it. All right. Okay. So there you go. Let's build American Apparel into a great company together. And that's the note you would put up today. Yeah. So if you were in charge of American Apparel, would you hire him back? Let us know on our Facebook page and on Twitter. Use the hashtag ABC2020. And when we come back tonight, bad behavior, the major executive and the meltdown at the fast food window. And you are about to see it right here. We'll be right back. Coming up, what did he film then post that lost him his job? From 200 grand a year, you're on food stamps? Even his kids trying to pitch in. Because we need the money. When speaking your mind becomes a career killer. Next. Twenty twenty continues with occupational hazards. Here's Nick Watt. We got milk, chicken, ground beef. Adam and Amy Smith are on their weekly supermarket run in Portland, Oregon. There's free range chicken. We love your chicken, and it's five ninety nine. We'll take it. Adam graduated top of his class at business school, a go getter, a high flyer. But now this father of four is shopping with food stamps. Tomatoes? No, 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 that's too much. Depending on the price. Oh, never mind. In some ways, it feels like I have completely failed. From 200 grand a year, you're on food stamps? Yeah, my voice is cracking right now <laughs> because I never thought I'd be there. It's humbling. He's talking about his spectacular fall for the very first time, talking to us. Well, we were living in our dream house. It was beautiful on three and a half acres. Smith lost that beautiful home in Tucson, Arizona after he was fired from his job as CFO of a medical device manufacturer two and a half years ago. The reason? An infamous internet incident spawned by nationwide protests at Chick-fil-A. Now one of the most popular fast food chains in the country is under fire this morning. You may recall the kerfuffle erupted when the chicken chain's president took a public stand against same-sex marriage. Confirming that the fast food chain is the new ground zero in the culture wars over gay marriage. 
Count Adam Smith a casualty of that war. All because of a 2 minute 20 second YouTube video that started like this. Well, I'm waiting in line. I'm next in line. Here I go. Smith's humbling experience wasn't caught on camera by someone else. No, he's the only person who pressed said. People have to have their Chick-fil-A anti-gay breakfast sandwich. You'd filmed yourself and then you made the decision. Yeah. You posted it. I did it. Yeah. We'll get back to Smith and the details of his cautionary tale in just a minute. Listen, hitting the send button, we do it all the time without really thinking. Sending emails, texts, tweets, selfies, videos out into the world. It can be life-changing, career-ending. Just ask these people, the school bus driver posting a beer-swilling selfie, the woman who came to the office dressed as a Boston Marathon bombing victim, and the naughty 10th grade math teacher known as Crunk Bear, posting saucy pics and drug talk. Fired, fired, fired. Every time I look at hiring somebody, I go and gather their digital footprint from every source I can get. Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary is not alone. Most companies now, mine included, employ people that specialize in just watching what's happening on all the platforms. Remember PR exec Justine Sacco? She learned that the hard way when she tweeted, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Yeah, she's a PR executive. And she kind of chuckled to herself. This was at Heathrow Airport, press send. She says it's meant to be a comment on white privilege, but people didn't get the joke and the tweet went viral while she was in the air heading to Africa. She had no idea. A hashtag started to trend worldwide, has Justine landed yet? Because everybody was so excited about Justine landing and realizing that her life would never be the same again. Back now to Adam Smith, who in the summer of 2012 decided to protest against Chick-fil-A. What's wrong with Chick-fil-A in your mind? They um, donated to anti-gay groups. There were anti and pro-protests. Now Smith got in line at his local drive-thru. There's a long line of cars too, I don't know if you can see, but it's uh... Here's what happened. Awesome. You know why I'm getting the free water, right? I do not. Because Chick-fil-A is a hateful corporation. And then he got carried away. I don't know how you live with yourself and, and work here. I don't understand it. This is a horrible corporation with horrible values. You deserve better. I got emotional about it. And said things to the clerk that you regret? I don't regret the stand that I took, but I regret the way I talked to her. I just can't stand the hate, you know? It gotta stop. It's gotta stop, guys. Smith pressed send, went to bed, woke up, went to work. And the receptionist, uh, first thing, big eyes, Adam, what did you do? The voicemail is completely full, and it's full of bomb threats. You were asked to resign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He refused and was fired, losing his six-figure salary and stock options worth? It was over a million dollars. And it's gone? It was taken when I lost my, my employment. The money, that beautiful home, all gone. They had to super downsize. No big house, no space for big toys. This is Sterling, helping give all we own to Goodwill. Oh, is that your Easy Bake Oven? Is that one of your favorite toys? Did you have a swimming pool? Yeah, we had a jacuzzi. You had a jacuzzi? What are you fishing for? We're getting off the point here. Smith quickly apologized to the cleric he got angry with. I am so very sorry for the way I spoke to you. She has forgiven him. I do forgive Adam Smith. I think he realizes how bad of a decision it was to make that tape. But apparently some others have not. Okay, so fired from one CFO job, Adam applied for another, 1,200 miles away in Portland, Oregon. He got it. The family had to move, but a job, a fresh start. Hooray. I hesitate to even ask what happened next. Oh, uh, it was two weeks on the job. I got called into the CFO's office, and they said that uh, you should have told us about the Chick-fil-A video. You're fired. <laughs> So he started showing the so-called chicken incident video at job interviews to get it out in the open. Rejection, rejection, rejection. The constant rejection that he's had going forward that's been really brutal. Wife Amy is now the family breadwinner. 
This might sound silly, but change your name, dye your hair, grow a different beard. All things that were recommended and some of those things I tried. Occasionally he'd get an offer, then always a call or a voicemail like this. I just don't want to see this be a distraction or any backlash. Some of the others have expressed some concern. Adam Smith, self-made man, reduced to nothing. His kids even trying to find ways out of his hell, making a shark tank like pitch. Instead of doing this, you do, you do this. $15? Okay. Should we put this on TV then, huh? Why would we do that? Because we need the money and have food for our family. Adam's son, Sawyer, sees a silver lining in all of this. You want him to have a full-time no, job? No, I don't. Why not? Because I want him to play. Okay, so this is the benefit, is that when he hasn't been working, he's been hanging out with you guys. Yep. That's good, right? Most people eventually can move on from the online faux pas. Justine Sacco of the Off-Color AIDS and Africa joke eventually landed another PR job, but not Adam Smith. It's now nearly three years and he's still unemployed. He's turned to meditation and the wisdom of Buddha. I'm not a Buddhist. I just found that to be really helpful. He also sent us this video of him and his kids dancing to the song Shake It Off. Ah, the wisdom of Taylor Swift. Shake it off, shake it off. How long are you going to be made to pay for... A mistake. I don't know. I do know that when you watch it for the first time. I don't know how you live with yourself and, and work here. I don't understand it. It feels like it just happened. It's always going to be there. Can't take it down. <laughs> Next, confessions from customer service reps from pulling a supervisor shuffle on you to transfer hell. No, I asked two people to ask for the phone number and put me on hold and never came back. When Occupational Hazards returns. Well, here's the question for you at home tonight. When you call customer service, how long have you waited? And once someone finally gets on the line, how do they treat you? You're about to hear the calls for yourself tonight. Customer service without a smile. And in some cases, the customers are no joyride either. Who's worse? Here's Rebecca Jarvis. Kanisha Jenkins of Houston, Texas had a problem. In order to get a refund from a company, she'd have to navigate every consumer's worst nightmare, that dreaded call to customer service. My name's Walter, I'm working customer service. Her low expectations were met, and then some. You're not gonna beat us out of our money. You people are famous for that. Wait, 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 wait. You said you that's people. Prison, what you mean by you that's people? I was beyond angry that somebody could be that ignorant to speak to me on the phone, and you're supposed to be customer service. The good news, the company is now out of business. The bad news, Kanesia's experience, while extreme, is hardly unique. And a growing online army of disgruntled customers is uploading their horror stories to prove it. Are you going to let me talk to your manager? <laughs> but remember, these nasty customer service agents started out as human beings. To find out what's behind all of this hostility, we called on two former service reps, Mark Pavlik, an ex-cable company agent, yeah. and Jacob Curtis, who used to work for a home security company. You almost never have anything good happen to you at work. You know it's going to be hell from the get-go. These guys say the explanation is simple. This can be one of the worst jobs in the world. Dehumanizing, unrelenting. So it's no surprise that some reps lash out at their own customers. There was a supervisor and the customer's like, hey, what's your name? How do you spell it? And he said, Y-O-U. It's not an easy job because you're trying to appease the company that you work for, and then you're trying to appease the angry customer who disagrees with the policies. It's very emotionally draining. And it's call after call after call. And boy, can some of those customers be vicious. Jacob posted this call on YouTube of a crazed man unloading on one of the service agents. Could I get the phone number on your account? 
Why? The last two people that asked for the phone number put me on hold and never came back. If you don't put me on the phone with somebody who can help me, no, no, no. I posted it because I thought it was funny. About half the people related to the customer. And that's how frustrated people are with customer service, I think, that they're relating to a guy like that. But it turns out that some call center agents have their own little tricks of the trade to deal with unruly customers. For instance, there's the supervisor shuffle. Okay, so let me transfer you to my supervisor. The company does not want you to get to the supervisor because it takes up the supervisor's resources and time. Most likely, if you want to speak with a supervisor, you're not going to be really speaking with a supervisor. Someone's right. pretending to be a supervisor? They have no real power over a normal customer service representative. According to our reps, another dirty little secret is sending difficult customers to transfer hell. I don't want to be transferred. Did you not hear me? All of a sudden, with one click of a button, hey, I'm going to transfer you, all your problems are resolved. It's so nice to do. I can say that it has happened. They've transferred people back into the queue. That is the worst. Not only are you being transferred, but you're back on hold. Yeah. You have to listen to Mariah Carey again. Most annoying to customers, our reps say agents often aren't really even trying to help. They're actually playing the sell game. But you definitely spend the majority of your time trying to push something on them that they don't want pushed on them, trying to sell them something. That focus on sales over service was made crystal clear in this Comcast service call from hell that went viral last year. We'd like to disconnect, please. Okay, so why is it that you don't want the faster speed? Help me understand why you don't want faster internet. I'm declining the state. Can you please go to the next question so we can cancel our service? Okay, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out here what it is about Comcast service that you're not liking. This phone call is a really actually amazing representative example of why I don't want to stay with Comcast. So can you please cancel okay. our service? No, okay. But I'm trying to help you. The way I'm that you can help, help me is by disconnecting our service. That's how you but can help me. how is that me. helping you, though? Like, That's what I want. Okay, so why is that what you want? Comcast has apologized for the call and says it isn't representative of how the company trains its service agents. Now, the National Customer Service Association told 2020 that there are many companies whose true culture is one of excellence in customer service. Case in point, the online shoe vendor Zappos. Check out their call center in Las Vegas, where every day is a festive, fun-filled day. Okay. <laughs> Here, the agents are pampered with a free snack bar and allowed to dress and decorate how they please. Creating a happy environment lends itself to people wanting to do a good job. Yeah, 24-7, so you can go to sleep, take a nap, and then call us. We'll be here. They know that I'm going to be able to help this person. I'm not going to have to tell them no. Yeah, right. We'll see about that. <laughs> to test their system, I order a pair of shoes from Zappos and call into customer service posing as one of those annoying, unreasonable customers. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm okay. I'm just a little bit upset about the shoes I just got. I'm so sorry to hear that. But you just want to return them. Well, what I would love to do is for you to send me a better pair of shoes and I'll just keep these. All right, well, that would be awesome. So you're sending me that pair of shoes for free? I am. Wow. I want to make sure you have the product that you want. While this is obviously going way above and beyond the normal customer service experience, our former reps clued us in on another way to get what you want from less enlightened companies. Post something on social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatnot. And as soon as someone posted something negative on there, we pretty much gave them whatever they wanted. Now that sounds a lot less stressful for both sides of the customer service experience. How can you treat a customer that way? How many supervisors do you want me to speak to that can't help me? No! So what are your worst customer service stories? And if you've dealt with customers, let us know too. Use the hashtag ABC2020 on Twitter, and we'll be right back. Next. I'm done with this. Workers who dared to say, take this job and shove it. I quit. I've got lady balls that compare to no other. When Occupational Hazards returns. Finally tonight, the careful decision when it's time to take a new direction at work. Zayn Malik leaving One Direction and millions in money and in fans. Tonight, the meltdowns after learning Zayn was gone. 
and the other spectacular moments when folks at the office say, I'm done. Here's Chris Conley. The story of my life, I give it Who would quit the world's biggest boy band in mid-tour? He did. This week, Zayn Malik taking his high notes and heading home for good, leaving the mega-grossing One Direction, saying, I want to be a normal 22-year-old. His fans flooding social media with their heartbroken reaction. Zayn, Zayn is leaving? What the f Hitting the same note as Zayn, this Texas school bus driver, also eager to avoid possibly overexcited young people, as she got on her phone and walked off a crowded school bus. You need to send somebody to get this bus and these kids. I'm done. I can't take it no more. Oh, no. Dramatic and how. Now, just as the satiric website The Onion has zeroed in on employees' love of ditching your job scenarios, consider the Quitzilla, a new breed of employee who orchestrates his or her departure into a major media event. Last year must have seemed like quitting time. In Anchorage, Alaska, KTVA News 11 correspondent Charlo Green was wrapping up her report on a medical marijuana group called the Alaska Cannabis Club. Why was this an issue that had particular resonance for you? Well, I love weed. <laughs> I love it. Every single reporting job I have probably smoked right after I got off work, daily. Charlo loves weed so much that she is the owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club. The subject of her report, this is a situation typically referred to as a conflict of interest, not to harsh anyone's mellow. You're not really supposed to do that, are you, Charlo? No, I have a degree in journalism. I know all about ethics. I made a choice and I am unapologetic in it. Unapologetic. Period. I've got like lady balls that compare to no other. There could be no denying that statement when Charlotte tagged her story live and her local news career went up in smoke. Now everything you heard is why I, the actual owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club, will be dedicating all of my energy toward fighting for freedom and fairness, which begins with legalizing marijuana here in Alaska. And as for this job, well, not that I have a choice, but it, I quit. I mean, uh, pardon for us. So that happened. I knew this was going to be my exit. All of it was planned out top to bottom, except for the it. Yeah, I just spoke from my heart. I spoke my truth in that moment. You knew you were going to be fired. I knew I would be fired if I told my boss that me, the weed reporter, had a weed business. Yes, of course I'd be fired. So you lied to him instead. No, I didn't lie. I omitted. We spy and told. Then there's Marina Schifrin. She'd put in a couple of years in Taiwan at a web-based news video content provider. She'd had enough. The Quitzilla urge kicked in. So around 4 a.m. at the office, she solo danced her way through this so long. Now up to more than 19 million views. Marina's video put that Kanye West track Gone onto the singles chart eight years after its release. In North Carolina, Gregory Eng had found a way to supplement his income with his